you're watching my body, my mundo. Mandalay will never win any beauty contest. Myanmar's second city is a relatively new creation, founded at the foot of Mandalay Hill in 1857. But if you can shut out all the honking, Mandalay has its own charm. There are splendid markets, many monasteries, temples, pagodas, and a bustling, working riverside to explore. For a two-day itinerary in Mandalay, I recommend the following, which I did exactly during my visit. Do Ubain Bridge. This is a popular spot for tourists during the day and at sunset. If you want to visit without a ton of other tourists, then consider getting up early and heading there for sunrise. This bridge is 1.2 km long bridge made of teak wood. It was originally built in the 1850s but had to be restored many times since then. The Mandalay Palace. A visit to the palace is likely the most popular thing to do in Mandalay and to be honest, I am not sure why I wasn't impressed. <laughs> to me, it wasn't overly impressive or interesting, but I'm sure some would disagree. Plus, it is centrally located and included in the tourist card fee, so you might as well check it out. Just behind Mandalay Palace is Mandalay Hill. This large hill is the common place for locals to come for exercise, but tourists come for the view. You can walk up this hill or take a tuk-tuk. Expect to pay around 7,000 kyat for the tuk-tuk ride to the top and back down. Mandalay Hill is a beautiful place to visit at sunset. But keep in mind, this is when it is the busiest. Number 4. The Kotodao Pagoda. It is my personal favorite as well out of all the things to do in Mandalay City. Basically, there are over 700 little pagodas. Each pagoda has its own marble slab. Inside, which is written on, all of these marble slabs read together to create a book. And in fact, this is the world's largest book. Number 5. Sui Nan Dao Kyong. Only a couple hundred meters from the road from the Kotodao Pagoda sits a very unique temple, Sui Nan Dao Kyong. This pagoda is special because unlike most of the pagodas around Myanmar, this one is made of wood. The wood has carefully been carved to create images and unique shapes everywhere you look. If you have time, I recommend visiting the Inua on the other side of the river. If you love ruins, Inwa is the place for you. Inwa is located only 11 kilometers from Mandalay city center, but due to limited roads, it is best accessed by boat. The boat costs 3,000 cats for a return trip and only takes 10 minutes each way. Once you reach Inwa on the boat, you can hire a horse and cart or motorcycle to take you around to some of the sites. It is possible to walk, but it is quite far, and you would add a few extra hours onto your day. Attractions at Inwa are, first, the Bagaya Monastery. Bagaya Monastery is one of the most famous attractions in Inwa. This monastery is made of teak wood, similar to the Shui Nan Dao Kyong in Mandalay City. It is very old, actually 426 years old to be exact. It isn't huge, but it is tall at 18 meters high. And it is beautiful, definitely worth a short walk around, in my opinion. In fact, it's still being used. It's active. When I went there, I saw monks and their teachers. This monastery is included in the Mandalay tourist card fee. It is little far, about 2 kilometers from the Inua boat dock, so it is best to organize a mode of transport if you want to see it. Next, Hadana Shini Pagoda Complex. Hadana Shini Pagoda Complex is located only a few hundred meters north of the monastery in Inua. 
Here you will find ruins of old temples, which is an interesting sight in comparison to all the pristine gold pagodas that are usually seen around Myanmar. This complex of pagodas was built in the 1400s. Let's listen to a Buddhist bell while we explore the area. This was a surprise to me. The Maha Ong Mai Bom San Monastery. Say that again. Maha Ong Mai Bom San Monastery. This monastery is a large multi-level brick building which is commonly referred to as Brick Monastery. It was originally built in 1818 but destroyed in the earthquake in 1838 which required it to be reconstructed several years later. You could reach the Brick Monastery by foot from the Inwa boat dock as it is only a few hundred meters away. And still in the vicinity, the Mingan. I personally love Mingan and I would highly recommend visiting here while you're in Mandalay. Mingan is about 45 minutes drive from Mandalay or an hour boat ride. Once in Mingan, you must pay 5,000 kyats, visitor fee, and this covers your entrance fee to all the places I'm mentioning next. Mingan was once a vacation place for the king and when you arrive, you'll understand why. It sits alongside the Irrawaddy River, and there are some pretty impressive places to check out around Mingan. Here are the places. Shin Byumi Paya. This temple was made famous thanks to Instagram, <laughs> but the truth is, it is even more impressive in person than in photos. Here you climb the various levels of the temple and get an impressive view from the top. And while you're there, you might as well take your own Instagram photo. Which I did not do. I was too tired to climb. And the Mingun Bell. The Mingun Bell is actually the third largest bell in the world. It says the second on the sign at the bell, but it's not true. It weighs at over 90 tons. The bell was completed in 1810, but like many historical structures in Myanmar, fell in the 1839 earthquake. It was once again suspended in 1896 to where it remains now. Today, the bell is hanging again and red for visitors to see for themselves. I did not lose my mind here. I was just illustrating the reverberation to the cameraman. I think it lasted for several seconds. Say more than 10 seconds, which was impressive. Next is the Mingon Patu Daoji. That's difficult to pronounce. Mingun Fatu Daoji. <laughs> Mingun Fatu Daoji is one impressive ruin. It was never finished and only stands at one third of its planned height. It was originally built for a king in 1790, but construction stopped once the king died. It suffered some large cracks also from the earthquake of 1838. Today it is a stupa with Buddha inside and an all-around ancient structure for tourists to explore. Time is limited to capture all the uh, attractions in the Mandalay region, but don't forget to see Sagaeng. It's one of my favorites. It's an area just opposite the river of Mandalay City and it's a very religious place. It is estimated that over 5,000 monks live in Sagaeng and there are more than 600 monasteries. For tourists, it's a place that offers some unique views from up on the hillside as well as on various monasteries to explore. In the area as well is the International Buddhist University, which has beautiful sceneries as well inside the campus. Sagaing is easily reached by car, only a 20-kilometer drive from Mandalay City. Umin Thinsi Caves is one of the attractions there. These aren't exactly caves, but there are 45 Buddhas all in a row here in a building constructed on the underside of a cliff. It is really a beautiful setting and building. And the Sun Upunya Shun Pagoda 
On a clear day, this lookout would be incredible. I was very fortunate to be here at midday. No fog, and the sights are unbelievable. Thank you for joining me here today as I share you the beauty of Mandalay in Burma or Myanmar. Don't forget to watch the upcoming videos also in Burma, this time in Bacon. This has been my barrio, my mundo. Thank you for watching.